Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Cardi. Have you ever wondered what a microgrid is and how it works? Well, today I'm talking to AJ Perkins, who's the president of DR Microgrid in California. As a native Hawaiian, he has a, a good background in this area, and he's been working a long time to figure out how to help communities and businesses and individuals back up their uh, utility network when things might go wrong. So stay tuned as I talk to AJ and learn more about his solution and microgrids in particular. Hi, AJ, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Good, well, thanks for taking the time to educate the audience a little bit about microgrids and nanogrids. Um, before we get started, maybe just tell, tell us a little bit about your background, uh, what, you, you know, what you've done in the past and what you're doing today. Sure. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Hawaii. So, you know, when we talk about resiliency, I actually make this comment often. You know, in, in the islands, we actually don't have a Hawaiian word for sustainability because it's really life. You know, it's, it's, that's what it is for us, right? You got to take care of the land, take care of the people, take care of each other. So, you know, it's, it's really a lifestyle for us. So, you know, especially when you grow up in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, 2,500 miles away from the next landmass, you really need to work hard to, to take care of everything around you, right? So it, it was definitely a great life for me growing up. You know, our, our family goes back, you know, to the kings and queens. So it's, it's really a part of who we are as a people, right? Uh, now you move me into California. You know, my background is in business. It's not in energy. So when I came to California, I saw, you know, a lot of the many opportunities surrounding energy, good and bad, you know, the challenges associated with it, as well as opportunities. And that's where I decided to really take a dive into it. And, and I, I, about four or five years ago, I decided to jump in and, and start, you know, really at the ground, just really saying, okay, how do I learn about the industry? I mean, even to the point where I'm in people's homes, talking to them about what their problems are. I was dealing with, you know, commercial and industrial clients and, you know, working with Lockheed Martin Energy. And, you know, we were the number one aggregator for Lockheed Martin Energy, you know, in some of their programs. And, and you talk about a fast track education, that was it. So it was really good because we had a lot of really interesting customers that, that presented some really solvable problems, but it was, you know, the industry is, is there's a lot of smart people with legacy, you know, roots in the actual industry. And sometimes it feels almost as if this is just the way it's supposed to be done. But with technology and things evolving and changing it for an outsider coming in and asking the questions, why? Why is that? It really started to shake, you know, the tree a lot. And, you know, our customers really helped drive the solutions. So, it, you know, I was, I was fast tracked, like I said, into this space of energy. Um, I have become a speaker at many conferences and conventions all around the country. I'm constantly asked, you know, to be coming in as a subject matter expert, rather, whether it's from the utility space or from companies or from industries. And it's really been a good learning opportunity, but I think, I think it all comes back down to the fact that when you walk in with an open mind and you ask the right questions, why, why not? How can we make this better? It creates people, you know, trying to figure out different and better solutions. Now that you're in California, uh, I know that you're doing a lot of work in uh, the microgrid area. So can you just explain what exactly a microgrid or, and I don't know if it's the same as a nanogrid, but if you can kind of explain uh, the concepts? Sure, sure. So, you know, for, for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple person. I'm a Hawaiian, right? So when I think about what a microgrid is, I don't like to get into the whole technical details. Really, it's it's generation being able to have something that generates power say like solar combined with something that stores power like energy storage or batteries and that has something that controls it all so that if the power ever shuts off from the main grid you can still operate in what they call island mode and that's really what defines the ability to have a microgrid 
its ability to generate power, store power, and if you ever get cut off, you still can continue to keep the ice cream cold. Primarily, when we first started um, bringing microgrids to businesses, it really was for resiliency. You know, when we work with a, you know, it was a biomedical facility in San Diego, you know, they had diesel generators as backup. And they're like, AJ, you know, we've been doing cancer research for 25 years. We can't have a shut off. So, you know, their diesel generators weren't giving them the comfort that they needed. So that's where they're upgrading their facility to put solar and batteries and, all, and controls to be able to give them the, the constant power that they need. Some of the power needs were also up and down, you know, where they would get these brownouts. People talk about blackouts. But we also got to look at brownouts where you've got these surges of power. You know, we worked with an auto manufacturer and they said anytime they had a brownout, all of their equipment down in the basement would explode, basically. So they would have to replace all this new equipment because there was a surge of power that came through. So to give them this consistent, reliable and resilient power was what it was. But what we have since done is we've actually taken the microgrid and created a revenue source from it. Because most people think of microgrids as being utilized in times of emergency, when there's a blackout, right? We've actually used it in times of need in that when the utility needs power, you know, say a demand response event, when everybody's AC is on in the middle of summer and they ask us to shut off equipment so that we can earn revenue from it, instead of shutting off air conditioners and lights, I just take my microgrid and island the building. So it's, it's, it is unique, but it creates um, a better um, opportunity for the utility and definitely a better opportunity for the business owner as well. So if you're, when you're promoting these, when you're going out and selling this kind of uh, solution, uh, where are you thinking the best bang for your buck or the best potential is going to be for, for microgrids? Is it on an island? Is it anywhere? Like where, I'm just curious as to where you see the ideal market for this kind of solution. So, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, you're, the conversation that you're having is, is really um, different than what a lot of other people have in that we first started out with resiliency and the thought about emergency and things like that. And the one thing that people, you know, are looking at now in this day and age with COVID, stay at home orders, all of these things. I mean, I've got, I've got families running multi-million dollar companies out of their home. Right. So if the power shuts off, you know, because we've got wildfires right now. I mean, just last night, they're talking about a fire off the 405 that's scorching 30 acres and all this stuff. So the utilities in California now have the ability to shut off the power to stop the spread of wildfires. If they shut off the power in the grid and you don't have a microgrid or a nano grid on your home, you're dead in the water. Your multi-million dollar company could be at risk because you don't have power. So when we talk about where is it opportunistic to put microgrids before, it was Hawaii, California. And it's not because Hawaii is on an island, but it's because the power is so expensive, right? So people would look at it and say, oh, the microgrid can save me money. Well, nowadays, it's not so much about saving me money on my utility bill. It's about saving my business. What is the cost or price of resiliency? What is the cost or price of being able to make sure that my manufacturing facility can keep operating, my office building can keep operating, my business, my home? You know, if I have if I have a mom that is in my home and she's on a breathing machine and the power gets off, the price is absolutely undefinable to be able to keep that breathing machine on. So it's it's the the conversation is definitely changing now because before our all we looked at was California and Hawaii. That's it. Because that's the most expensive. They got the biggest incentives. The, the people are much more progressive. But nowadays, cost of life is so much more. Cost of business is so much more. Resiliency is really, now we need to quantify and monetize what this means to us to be on at all times. COVID has really kind of highlighted that. It couldn't have done it better because when you think about it, just telling people you should be more prepared. You should think about redundancies. If this happens, what happens here? What, what's your plan? Uh, most people, they said, you know what, I'll think about that tomorrow. Uh, right. But now it's kind of right in your face and you have Absolutely. to think about it. 
you know, and so if you do want to be sustainable, you want to think about that continuity piece, this is something that should be, you know, one of the solutions you're considering as far as how do I maintain connectivity and continue to do business? You're right, the health piece, if you're on a, a ventilator, anything, anything that re relies on electricity. As far as, you know, before we wrap up, is there anything else I might not have mentioned that you want to you wanna talk about? You know, I think, you know, um, LBNL, the Lawrence Berkeley National Labs, did a white paper on nanogrids. And, you know, nanogrids, in my simple definition, a nanogrid is a small and microgrid. But when you read the paper, it's not necessarily true. They go into a little bit deeper touch points on what makes a nanogrid. But, but for all intents and purposes, let's say that a nanogrid is a microgrid on a whole. Okay, you know, it's a, it's a smaller set of pieces that come together. And I mean, and again, for, for the, the sake of this conversation, let's look at that. One of the things that was talked about in this paper, and I truly believe this, is that microgrids are starting to take hold in the country. They're not new. Microgrids have been around for a long time, you know, but they've been really dedicated for hospitals, school campuses, business campuses, and whatnot. But when I, when I think about the need to blanket the United States with as many microgrids or nanogrids, this autonomous opportunity. Now, I'm not trying to say get off the grid. I'm trying to say be prepared. You know, stop counting on just the utility to keep the power on. I mean, come on, you got to take responsibility, you know? So now it's a matter of nanogrids is the biggest and best opportunity for this to spread. Because if each, you know, right now, if we depend on our large corporation to spend millions upon millions of dollars to put a microgrid on a factory, on a facility, that's a hard nut to swallow. It really is. But if I go ahead and take the responsibility to say, I got to protect my family, and I'm going to make the investment, instead of just putting solar, solar is not the solution anymore. It really isn't. You know, sun is up for this many hours of the day, right? So we need to create an opportunity to protect our family. So if, if everybody takes the responsibility to say, I'm going to protect my family, I'm going to make the investment and do this, or I'm going to tell my neighbor and my neighbor and my neighbor, it starts to spread where it's not a matter of trying to just save money. I'm protecting my family, my community, everything about what we are. And, and I think that's the thing that we need to do. So for me, I don't care whether you use me or somebody else, just make sure you get it done. This is something where everybody needs to lock arms and say, how do we protect our families and our communities and our businesses? I'm going to uh, put a link to your website in the video so people can learn out more about microgrids, the work you're doing. And uh, thank you for taking the time today to, to speak with me. And, and best of luck. You're welcome, Leanne. Thank you so much. Take care. Aloha. Okay. Bye-bye.